Matthew chapter 5, verse 33. We've been on the Sermon on the Mount. And we're kind of picking back up on the modernistic uh, hippies, lovers, you know, the good things that Jesus said. I mean, we stepped away from the adultery and the, and the divorce part, because many of them are. And we come back and picking this up. Now, we just talked about marriage and divorce. And adultery. So we move to 533. Again, you have heard that it has been said by them of old time. My eyes are blurry. Thou shalt not forswear thyself, but shalt perform unto the Lord thy oath. I say unto you, swear not at all, neither by heaven. So, we've gone from marriage now to, do you take this woman to be your awful wedded wife? I do. Do you take this man to be your awful wedded husband? I do. You made an oath. You made a vow. You see what they do? Well, it's our marriage vows. It's not an oath. Well, you know, it's not fornication. They're shacking up. So you see, America has, let's change the word. And we change the word. Therefore, we are resistant to sin. Let's get ourselves a synonym dictionary where we can find other words in the Greek and the Hebrew. I mean, after all, they've been doing it in the pulpit. A wedding vow is an oath, is swearing. There are people who sign a contract. I am going to do this for this amount of month, every month. For this amount of years, this period of time, this is what I'm going to do, and then you violate it. And the thing is, well, you know, I ended up in the hospital, I had medical. And, uh, yeah, see, that's the problem. We do things and we don't ask God. We do that for cars, we do that for homes. College, right now, we're, we're in this big thing with, with President Biden. He wants to erase everybody's debt of college. Well, they signed the paperwork. They knew what was coming. Now, you see, when you eliminate that oath, that vow, that swearing, you have eliminated responsibility. And if they go ahead and clear everybody's college debt, you have taught the generation, hey, go ahead, do whatever you want to do, and the government will take care of you. That's the Antichrist. Just get the mark and let the government. I think under the I think under the mark of the beat, you're not gonna have to do a checkbook. Just you got the mark, that's good enough. I, I think, right? But swear not all by heaven. For it's God's throne. So one of the things people say, my heavens. He used to, I haven't heard it as, as often, but my heavens. No, it's not your heavens, it's God's heavens. Heaven to Betsy, that's another old one. Nor by the earth. Oh, my mother earth. <laughs> or is his footstool. Now look at that. We honor the, well not we, the, the people honor the earth as she's some goddess and she needs help, she needs love. She's got her own Earth Day, and you know, protect her and recycle and put your plastic out in the bins, put your cans out in the bins, put your bottles out in the, and they all end up the same trash dump. 
God says, you know, the heavens, they're mine, they're my throne. And they are. Well, what about the earth? I put my feet up on it. Do you realize the size of a footstool to a chair? It's less than half. Neither by Jerusalem. Now watch this one. Neither by Jerusalem. I would assume that the Jews use Jerusalem as, you know, it's their city. It's their capital. For it is the city of the great king. See that capital K? When we were in the Old Testament, what did I tell you about that capital K? That's Jesus Christ. That's the millennium. That's the millennium going out into all eternity. Jehovah Witnesses say, well, Jesus is not God. Well, what do you do? Because you run that capital K in the Old Testament, you'll find it's the Lord, capital L, capital O, capital R, capital D. It's Jehovah. It's Jesus. So we start off with the heavens. We go to the earth. We go to the city of all cities. Notice God didn't say Washington, D.C. God didn't say the Kremlin. God didn't say Buckingham Palace. He said Jerusalem. Neither shalt thou swear by thy head, because thou canst not make one hair white or black. And you say, well, you know, my mother, she dyes her hair. My, my beard, you see, I got this white patch here. And when he comes really stupidly looking, I will get, there's a men's hair dye. And I will dye my beard so it looks semi-okay. But after time, it comes back. I forget what the what the exact word is for the color of the hair and skin. Okay, you may be able to dye your hair, but it's not going to stay. The new hair is going to come out of your head, out of your skin, out of your body. It's going to be your old hair. Okay, now here's something that James writes about the tongue. The tongue is written on the fires of hell. Our tongue is trouble. There have been people throughout history who have been put to death by the tongue. When a jury comes into the room, and they stand there and they read the papers of their verdict. We find this man guilty. All nine of us find this man guilty. You have professed with your mouth. When they were in the jury's chamber. When kings. And there's been kings in history. You know what? I don't love her no more. Chop off her neck. John the Baptist. The girl said. She didn't say I was going to sneeze. I did the girl said, give me the head of John the Baptist. That was her lips. Because she could have told her mother, you're foolish. That's wicked. Hey, dad or stepdad, you won't believe what mom wanted me to tell you. The very words of Jesus Christ. On the other hand, all your red lettering. I wish, I wish my Bible had it. You realize that red letter, if you got a red lettered Bible, that's God. I know it's not God that you hold witness, but it's God. Yay, yay, nay, nay. For who, whatsoever, that's, look what he says, whatsoever is more. We're not talking about the person, we're talking about what's being said. So you go before a judge and you make a plea. And then now what you're going to do is you're going to try to alibi. You're going to try excuse yourself. There are times when I'm repenting to the Lord, I say, Lord, that's it. I'm, that's all I'm going to say. Because anything else is an excuse and you're not going to take the excuse. Anything else is a blame and you're not going to take the blame. 
what I laid down here under the blood of Jesus Christ. Okay, if somebody else has had me to say it, if I have been deceived by somebody else, or if there, you will validate without my big mouth. I did this sin. Okay, that's it. That's under the blood. And many a time is I did the prison ministry. And you know, you you say something, and I, I usually tell them, I don't want to know why you're here. It's none of my business. And we're not a Catholic church. You confess it to God. And they'll come up and they, you know, oh, it's not mine. I didn't do it. I was saying, let me just shut up. Because they'll get on ramping and ramping. And ramping. I said, well, let me just ask you one question. And this question is for me, too. I'm not in jail. You are. Is there something that you have done in your life that you deserve this prison sentence? And they're like, well, oh, yeah. You, somewhere in your life, you have done something worthy of a crime of going to jail. Well, everybody has. Okay. You're doing that time. And then I'll turn around and say, you think you're innocent? And all? Yeah, I did. Well, what do you think Jesus was? And we know absolutely Jesus was innocent. And he was put in jail. He was tried by a court. He was found guilty when he was innocent. The government said uh, three, four times, I find no fault in him. And he still went to the cross. What are you complaining about? You think, I thought, this is what I tell you. You think if I take a piece of paper, go talk to your mother, you think we can find some sins in your life? If I go talk to your spouse, you go, what do you think I find? If you got children, you go, what do you think you're going to? It'd be better like Jesus. C.A. Nay. Question? Yes. There's three answers that should be just, just plain and simple for mankind. Yay, nay, I don't know, sir. I don't know, man. We, we drop in the sir and ma'am. For whatsoever is more than causes, excuse me, cometh of evil. If you try to alibi, if you try to excuse yourself, God says it's evil. God. We're talking about Jesus, red letter. You have heard that it has been said, and this is in the law, an eye for an eye and a tooth for a tooth. That's in the law. Okay? Leviticus 24.20, Deuteronomy 19.21. It's in the law. The law said if you, if you, if you smite a maid servant or man servant and he loses a tooth or his eye, he can, he's free. This is law. Okay, now this goes all the way back to where is it? verse 17. Think that I am not come to destroy the law or the prophets. I am not come to destroy, but to, to fulfill. All right, so, okay, let's talk about the law. And you realize we're talking to the common people here. Every man has looked at a woman the way he should. Somebody has foolishly made an oath or a vow in their life. Have you ever said, I'll meet you Wednesday at 2 o'clock and then you missed it? Have you ever told somebody, yeah, I'll pray for you, and didn't? That's an oath. That's a vow. That's a swearing. But I say unto you, that ye resist not evil, but whosoever, okay, Jew, Gentile, Christian. Now who follows these? Ready? Let's read them. And let's see who, who's ever followed this. Shall smite thee in the right cheek, turn to him the other also. I, I've seen videos of street preachers to get smacked. And they don't go, oh, here, here's the other one. It's affable. <laughs> they just keep on preaching. But 
Think about the people you know in, in your church. The Christians that you know, they love the book of Matthew. If you were to go up and smack them on the right side of their cheek, what do you think they would do? What did Jesus tell you to do? Whosoever, Jew, Gentile, or Christian. Okay. I've, I've had people close to do it to me when I'm street preaching. I've had I had people throw stuff at me. I had a woman come up, push me in, my, in the gut, and then pull the wire out of my, my uh, amplifier, but never slapped me. What would they do if you had slapped you? I'd just, I'd just keep going. But, I mean, in a day and age today, if you just go up and slap somebody, automatically you're going to be charged with assault. Well, we come to that. How about this one? Verse 40. If a man will sue thee at the law and take thy coat, let him have thy coat also. That, that's under the coat. That's maybe like a vest. Okay? So what Christian, what church has been taken to court, and they have, the deacons have taken the pastor, and the pastor has taken the Christians. I know of churches who, don't you ever sign a pledge in the church, a pledge card. I, I have heard, I don't know, I have heard where people have signed a pledge card, left that church, I may have gone on to another church or not even serve it up. I have heard where the church have gone and sued those people for that pledge. And the church won. That's a legal doctrine. You made an oath or a swear to do something. They don't care you left. Somebody takes you to court. Well, you know, that property doesn't belong to you, it belongs to them. All right, here's my house. Here's the pastor's house. This is the Sermon on the Mount. This is the, see, this is part of the Sermon on the Mount the moderates don't. Unless... They are on the good side of it. If they are on the side, oh, you know, I've been slapped. I'm going to turn to the other cheek. I, you, you stolen from me, or you, you, you take me to court, and I get the. But on the other hand, if they become the offender, and you've heard people at times, you know, turn to the other cheek. <laughs> you've heard that. That's Matthew. That's the Sermon of the Mount. And Jesus doesn't give any cause. Why did he sue you at the law? Doesn't say. Now, on the other hand, church age doctrine, I'm not Paul only ism, but the church age doctrine for Paul with Christian and Christian is don't go to a law court. Especially before an unsaved judge. Call somebody in your church least esteem. Say, listen, he said this, I say this, we can't come to a conclusion. Will you please, by prayer, hear us both and settle the matter? And today, the matter would be settled and you have a complete church-wide split. The church doesn't follow Matthew. Whosoever shall compile thee to go a mile, go with him twain. Now, <laughs> come with me to the store. Okay. The store is back there. Well, we got to go two miles. That's not 
the point that Jesus is saying. And the expression is, go the extra mile. All right? If you find somebody on the street that's hungry, and say, listen, I'll take you in this restaurant, I'll take you in this convenience store, if you want something to eat, I'll get, and you know, many will say no, because they're not, they want the cash for other, but if somebody said, yeah, that'd be nice, take them inside, get them a sandwich, get them a dessert, and get them a drink. And then make sure you tell the cashier, do not take the money back. I, I learned to, to, you know, ask the cashier if he's got a magic marker, take, him, take a black magic marker and cross off those barcodes. You won't believe how people will scam you, but you know, that, was, that was free, didn't cost you extra. Um... You've been called to help a Christian. Uh, 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 you know, you, you mow their lawn. Well, if they got stuff people threw on, you know, on the side of the road, uh, pick that up. Uh, maybe, maybe somebody's asked you for whatever. Can you get gro Can you get my groceries? You know, maybe they broke their whatever it is. Help them bring it in the house. Help them put it away. And it, the reality is, is make sure the job is done to the fullest. There are people, they will do a job, they will do as much as that job to be. And then they're gone. Give to him that asks you. Now, you got it. Now, don't go flying off the handle. Oh, Jesus said, give unto the asking. For every homeless person and every person on the street, I'm going to give money. Yeah, you're going to give money to the guy that holds the signs that I need a beer? They want to do that. You want pictures? I got them. Would you give money to someone who's holding the sign? I need marijuana. Well, no. Well, Jesus said, if he asked for money, give it to him. Would you be outside of Walmart and someone said, hey, listen, I make all this money. I don't have to claim it on the taxes or anything like that. I make thousands of dollars. Would you give him money? Well, no. Well, wait a minute. Jesus said in Matthew 5, give unto him to ask of thee. So the conclusion is God, Jesus... It's not saying, hey, just give out your money free. How are you going to pay your bills? Now, the Bible speaks against lazy people and fools. Scripture with scripture. <laughs> Excuse me. Scripture with scripture. You're not going to endorse a fool. And Jesus is not saying indoors are poor or lazy. When Jesus healed Peter's mother in law, she got up and started working, started doing things. You've got to use sense. Give to him that asks thee, and from him that would borrow of thee, turn thou not, turn not thou away. Now, under the law, we are under the Jewish law. A Jew was not, a Hebrew was not allowed to charge his brother an interest. He could charge the Gentiles. So the Hebrew would be thinking, oh, here comes the Hebrew. Can I borrow uh, 10 shekels? Well, if I give him 10 shekels, the only thing he's going to give back to me is 10 shekels. Now, I, I give 10 shekels to George. 
George is going to have to give me 10 shekels and interest. You see what I'm saying? That's the context there. What you think is, well, I'm not going to make a profit if I, if I, let him, if I gave him money. I can't. The law says. You see, in some aspects of the law, is you'd be like, why would I do it? It's no benefit to me. Of God it is, but you don't think about that. There, you know, why give to the church? What's going to, I mean, don't realize that there's a heavenly account, there's a heavenly bank account recording what you do and what you give. You may not get the interest here on the earth. <laughs> Remember, he's talking to Jews. And we're going to come in the life of Jesus and Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John. We're going to see a lot of giving. And when you're in Daytona Beach, I mean, this wasn't so much in London County. Maybe other places. But in Daytona Beach, where I live now, is, is, is you, you got to be wise. We had seen a man one time. He, we're used to street preach. He's sitting there, and he had his stuff, a hat, and all that. And, and my wife saw, I didn't see it. My wife saw somebody went and purchased some fruit because there's a farmer's market. And he purchased some fruit. I was going to say fresh fruit, but... He purchased some fruit and gave the man fruit. And they got in their car and they drove off and they went across the bridge, which means you're out of the area. The guy took the fruit and threw the fruit, ew, try to say that, took the fruit and threw it off in the bushes. That's not what he wanted. Man, if you're hungry and starving, somebody gave you some fruit. The only complaint you got is to be, I'm going to say, room temperature. That's room temperature for Florida is hot. Okay? You have got, now listen, the people that gave him fruit, they're giving, they're giving out a kind heart, whether it be for, for God, for religion, or for selves, or for him. And the reaction was, I don't want that. I had a guy one time, he came up to me, I don't know, you have some money, some food. I said, hey, listen, I'll, right here. I just, I was working. I just come out of a convenience store delivering newspapers. I said, we'll go in there, we'll get you something neat. Oh, no, no, no. Not right now. I mean, you know, if you give me, I'll buy something later. I said, I, you go in there right now, yeah, I'll get you what you need. You can eat it later or put it in a bag. Oh, no, 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 no. I mean, after five or ten minutes, listen, i got to get back to work. You, you don't want the money for food. Because I just giving you a blank check. That money would have been used for drugs, for alcohol, for women. You gotta be wise. Because you will be held accountable for giving your money to somebody who's gonna waste it. You are not gonna get a reward from Jesus if you give money to somebody who has a sign that says, I'm gonna get a beer, I'm gonna get marijuana, whatever it's. It's not a need. You have heard that it has been said, Thou shalt love thy neighbor, would be for Jewish. Another Jewish neighbor. And that could be anybody in the tribe. That doesn't mean the guy next door. If he's Jewish, love thy neighbor and hate thy enemy. That's the Gentiles. Go ask Peter. Go ask Jonah. That's the Romans. The Romans and the Jews did not get along. Pilate tried everything to get Jesus off his hands. And the Hebrews were like, crucify him. Well, he's innocent. This, I'll, beat him. I'll, I'll beat him with, with, with a whip. And then we'll let, okay, get this done? No. <laughs> But I say unto you, love your enemy. Now the Democrats will, will run to this word, love your enemy. And they'll hate the Republicans. 
There's a fight between the Democrats and the Republicans, and the Republicans say, love your enemies, and there's a fight between the Republicans and Democrats. Hypocrites. And yet all the modernists, all your, your politicians runs to Matthew 5. We love our, love our enemies, love our enemies. All right, what about Russia right now? What about the Christian? There are missionaries right now in Russia. We support missionaries in uh, uh, Ukraine. And I pray for their sake. There are people supporting Bible, Christian, Bible missions in Russia. And they're praying for them. And right now, Russia is the enemy of the world again. Mean, nasty China. They gave us COVID-19. And yet there are Bible missionaries serving the Lord Jesus Christ in China. And there are people praying for them. And when a Christian says, Oh, those mean, nasty Chinese. Better be careful. Because some of those mean, nasty Christians, I mean, mean, nasty Chinese, may be Christians. And they're not your enemy. Maybe some of those communist enemies, socialist enemies of Russia, China, and Korea, that maybe one day through missions or Christians, maybe they will become saved. Bless them that curse you. All right, you, you want to work on that one? Go out in the street, go door to door, tell people of Jesus Christ. And then be happy when people are spitting in your face, yelling, cussing at you, giving you every four-letter word, giving words that you never even heard, telling you how wrong you are, what your God is, what you are. You need to go to blank. You need to go do this with yourself. You need to do it. You are ruining us. You are ruining our businesses. We had nothing. And then you sit there and your heart says, Lord God, they don't know what they're doing. They have no idea what they're doing. They're just sold under the devil. Do good to them that hate you. All right, you, 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 your boss hates you. You do a good job. You, your neighbor hates you. You make sure you clean up your yard and part of his yard on that side of the house. Don't mow the lawn right up to his line. Do a little over. And pray for them which despitefully use you and persecute you. Paul did that. You have been rightfully arrested, shut up by the police. What I mean rightfully is they have been ordered, you're right they're in the wrong. That's what I mean, right. You have not violated the law. And they still arrest you, do send you away in silence. Are they on your prayer list? Do you say, okay, officer, let, let me have your, your name. You know, let's, let's show you your name tag. Write that down. Are you writing that name down to put in your prayer list? When they come to you, mayor, somebody, somebody, all right, are you writing that mayor's name down? Not to write a letter to the president of the United States, but you writing that letter. Okay, I'm putting it in my prayer list. Richard Rombard. I can't even describe his his ordeals in prison would pray for the guards and all that 
and his conduct toward the guards, his good nature of the Lord, some of those guards got saved. And many times those guards ended up in the same cell he did. You're not going to win somebody to Jesus that's lost if you like if you act like a jerk. Okay, now how do we know this is not Christian doctrine? How are Christians saved? Well, the Philippian jailer, jailer came out and said, Paul, Silas, what must I do to be saved? Believe on the Lord Jesus Christ and thou shalt be saved. Okay? Paul goes on to tell us that then the Holy Spirit comes and dwells in us. Paul will go on to tell us that with the Holy Spirit in coming and to dwell in us, we get the spirit of adoption we can call God Abba Father. Okay? You know where it's written. We are children of God the Father through Jesus Christ and the Holy Spirit who witnessed to us, who brought us to Jesus. And when we received him, the indwelling of the Holy Spirit. Okay? Look at 545. That, you, that ye may be your children of your Father, capital F, which is in heaven. How is the, how are you a father according to Jesus right now in Matthew 5 a church gospel I mean a gospel that the church runs to okay turn the other cheek don't swear don't oath give them your cloak Love thy neighbor. There's a Democrat word, uh, statement. There are people in the United Nations today believe they're going to a utopia because they love their neighbor, uh, their enemies. That's the whole purpose of the United Nations. And then we read this early, and blessed are the peacemakers, so they shall see God. Matthew. So running to Matthew like the church does and teaches, well, we're the peacemakers. We love our enemies. God is our father. Paul says, no. Paul will tell you you're not saved without the belief and faith in Jesus Christ alone. Oh, we follow the law. Not by works of the flesh are you saved but by the precious blood of Jesus Christ alone. We're seeing works of the law. I think it's the Galatian church that Paul writes to. This is works of the law of Matthew 5. It contradicts, I believe it's Galatians, the church that went back under the law. Have I told you, have I become your enemy because I tell you the truth? The enemy part is, hey, listen, you're not under the law. You are not a child of God because you do good and you love the guy that hates you because you're an idiot. I've been persecuted by the police. Well, what's the problem? I was only going 100 miles per hour down the highway and they had the nerve to pull me over. They pulled me over because I'm black. B B -O -F. Uh, maybe because of the stuff that's coming out of your mouth. Maybe the things you're holding in your hand. Maybe it's your conduct. <laughs> right? For he maketh the sun to rise on the evil and on the... Okay, this is today. And sendeth rain on the just and the unjust. Okay? This ties in with love your enemies. This ties in if, he, if somebody smites you. This ties in if somebody takes you to court. All right, they're in the wrong, God. Okay, but I give them rain too, don't I? If farmer 
Gentile, you hate him. And I make it to rain on him, like I make you the early and latter rain for you. And farmer Gentile has tomatoes. You enjoy those tomatoes. Though you ate the Gentile. Peter had a problem with the Gentile. <laughs> Not me, Lord. I don't eat anything unclean. You realize what he's doing later on in the book of Acts? He's sitting down with the Gentile. Ooh, this is good food. You want to pass me more of that pork? <laughs> oh, wait a minute, guys. Hold on. What's wrong? Here comes the Hebrews. I'll be back. <laughs> Save my plate. <laughs> right? <laughs> oh, uh, Peter, come here for a minute. <laughs> Listen, God is just as merciful to the Christian as he's with the unsaved. Because your terrible, rotten boss may be unsaved, but when he signs that paycheck, you can pay your bills. For, he, for if you love them that love you, Baptist, what reward... Have you? Or have you? Do not the public... You know, the public kids, you're going to realize... Uh, Levi, the tax collector, was a publican. These are the, the scum. The Republicans say it would be the Democrats, and the Democrats would say it's the Republicans. Okay? I mean, these are not nice people. They rob, they steal, they deceive, they're... they're their, their headquarters is Washington. I mean, no. Forgive me. Okay. I mean, to call them publicans, that's a dirty word. It's like they were called Christians at Antioch. That wasn't good. That was not kind and loving. You're just like that man, Jesus. You, you Christian. <laughs> Add a little raspberry at the end of that. I'm serious. And so to say, that's what the public is doing. They would get a smear in their face. And if ye salute your brethren only, what do ye more than others? Do not even the public so? You know, that's our politicians. American. Oh, you see their ugly faces coming up to November. <laughs> it makes me angry. You see their ugly face. They're out there. Hey, shake my hand. Hi, hi, hello, hi, hello. And the day after election, you don't ever see them again for two or four years. I mean, one time I was preaching. And one of the candidates was there. They had the whole big thing. So I walked right up to that guy. I said, we only see you now. We won't see you when you get our vote. I said, you'll hit in your office. You win the election. Why don't you come out now after that? I said, don't you turn away from me. A bunch of thugs. I mean, bodyguards. Oh, you don't like the truth. You don't. You will not see them. You know what? President Biden, President Trump, whoever, and the next president, walk up to the White House and say, Hi, I'm a taxpayer. Can I come walking in? Get out of here. God, can we sit down and have a talk? Can you and I, just Jesus and the Holy Spirit, can we talk? Come on in, my son. You know what Paul said? Paul says we are seated in heavenly. I am at the throne. I can't be at the White House. I can't go to the uh, uh, Buckingham Palace. I can walk up to the throne of God. God even allows Satan there. <laughs> I can walk up to the throne of God and say, God, just... I'm having a terrible day. I'm sinning against you and you are still allow me in your presence. And I'm not a pile of smoke. 
one day he's gonna he's gonna rapture me out of here. And if I'm not raptured, which I will be raptured, but if I die before I'm raptured, I'm gonna be absent from this body and presence of the Lord. Hallelujah, glory to God. If you salute your brethren only, Hebrews, Jews, or Baptists, what do ye more than others? Do not even a publican. So. I mean, there's some Baptists. There, there are Baptists out there. They won't associate with other Baptists because they don't have their Baptist belief. There are Baptists out there. They are so prideful in their church and their pastor and all that. They look down upon others. You don't do what we do. You don't do how we do it. Never mind other religions. People think I'm like that. No, I'll deal with Catholics. I'll deal with a Jehovah Witness. I will try to show them Jesus. I'll try to sit them down with a Bible, be nice, generous, thoughtful. But ye there be ye therefore perfect. Well, what do you do with that verse? Jesus Christ has not died. He has not been buried. He is not resurrected from the dead, and he tells the Jews. You can be perfect. By what he just told you to do. Do you see now where the modern is? Do you see where your worldly carnal church? You see the worldly puffed up Baptist get it from? Hey, if I'm nice... If I'm sweet in the open, not in private, I am a child of God, and I am perfect. And when you do what the Bible tells you to do, you're preaching, you're not, judge not, least he be judged. <laughs> and what they're telling you is, I am more godly than what you're doing. I am better than you. How on earth can you be a child of God screaming at people or disturbing people by knocking on their door? I just sit back in my office cubicle, wherever I work, and I just let my light radiate. And they have no idea who you are, what you are, where you go. But they know you're the first one at the office party. And they'll say, well, you know, Jesus turned the water into wine, but he didn't drink it. <laughs> and after that episode, you don't see anything about him staying at that wedding when they were serving the wine. He was there for the marriage. <laughs> <laughs> 